This is your daily briefing and you're most welcome to it. Of course, you are. Spoke about uh, Jed Spence with you recently and that was kind of very much focused on it, him compared to his contemporaries where he stood in the championship and all that kind of area, that space. This time round, I'm trying to look a bit more broadly and perhaps with an overview in mind with him, fact that he's very close to joining us, what he exhibits characteristic wise, no, I don't mean as a person, but as a footballer. So a slightly different, perhaps more sort of holistic um, approach to the player. Um, there's a fair amount of information here for here to us to view, and the trick in my mind here is to try and cut to the chase. I'm always talking about make, trying to make this information as digestible as possible for you. So this is like a thumbnail sketch of how he is as he sits on somebody else's forecourt. I've got to warn you, though, we're not 12, and this isn't, let's imagine how really brilliant he might be um, with a better team of coaches and players around him. This is more about processing the factors that are in place now. How does he play? What sort of character is he on the field? And so we use the statistics, or as I prefer to call it, the numbers, because that's what they are. They're just numbers. Like a banister on a staircase when the bulb has popped. Okay, so it's just to help us go in the right direction. And whatever we're worried about, go ghosts and goblins and ghoulies, the reality is we hold onto the banister and are sure of our footing, we stand a much better chance either getting to the top or the bottom. To err on the side of caution, take a pragmatic view is the only way to proceed. Um, otherwise we may as well just call it a day and I'll just sit here and hold up a big sign saying, he's gonna be electric which is uninformed, unworldly, and unhelpful. Um, two parties concerned, us and uh, Middlesbrough, uh, incapable of getting a deal done prior to Spurs departing for South Korea. It's not the end of the world, but it just does go to, to kind of underline the fact that this brinkmanship, you know, either on their side holding out for more cash or Levy trying to squeeze pennies off of the deal, doesn't benefit anybody. Need that boy to be in with the gang as soon as possible. If we look at the lad's heat map, we clearly have an attack-minded player, and this is the thing to focus on with the guy. Once we peer a little closer, Spence is not so much defensively suspect, but he's simply somebody who doesn't point in that direction. Okay, and I think this is a uh, this is kind of like a defining comment. He he said uh, modestly. Tactically, it's not a deal breaker as Conte operates with a back line that accommodates movement opposed to a flat back four that naturally weakens as it expands to subsidise absences. But it's when we start to focus on the attacking side of Jed's game, the value is certainly easier to identify. Naturally, the idea here in this deal and any other is to accentuate the positives in Spence's game. So whilst general defensive coaching would be useful, you don't buy a cat and then train it to be like a dog. Neil Warnock, I appreciate, is a character that um, is divisive to some. Um, and he identified the situation, even if he wasn't willing or able to exploit it at Middlesbrough. And I quote, he needed to sort himself out, really. I basically said to him that you can go to the top or you can go to non-league. I think Steve Cooper, this is the guy at Forest, is the manager for him, to be honest. He has let him go forward more often, which suits his game. And never a truer word said. If Spurs are to make a success of Jed Spence, then I would suggest that they either don't coach him, as they have with Ryan Sessignon, who is neither one thing or the other. Let's, let's, let's have it right. Or they primarily focus on this 21-year-old's strengths. I've maintained that Spence's talents at this stage are comparatively modest, and that's because they are. And if we look at the outcomes of his final third dribbles, for example, there's this distinct case for focusing on the decision-making and the programming of the lad with a set of countermeasures that can aid his progress. And this isn't just waffle, believe it or not. This is how a lot of coaches operate in terms of if you're in this situation and you have the ball or you don't have the ball, but a set of circumstances present themselves, what do you do? Because quite frequently, the, the repetitive nature of football in particular, and any sport, 
allows you to kind of adopt these countermeasures. A forearmed is a forewarned. Or is that the other way around? We'll never know. The 21-year-old was notably praised for his impressive performances in the FA Cup victories against Leicester City and Arsenal. So there are grounds for a certain amount of belief that Jed can account for himself against tougher opponents. But we need to keep that kind of on the back foot and look at how he performs, generally speaking, because those traits are what he is going to bring with him. I think he needs, as do many, guidance to convert his dynamism and forward thinking play into a greater number of successful outcomes. Two goals and four assists are promising, but far from exceptional. The learning curve is going to be steep. And that's not a criticism. That's called a reality that applies to absolutely everybody. Awareness when not in possession, defensive positioning and occasionally poor decision making are all areas that will need to improve. Emerson Royal has shown signs of improvement, whether you care to acknowledge them or not. Perhaps Antonio Conte knows where there's a box of spare bulbs. Good luck. Keep it on.